Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar 2. As is our practice, we begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Baribharti Sanjariharti Lilaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Baribharti Sanjari Harti Leelaya In this course, we aim to study the three important types of Samasas in Sanskrit, namely Avyayi Bhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva Samasa. We have already studied Avyayi Bhava Samasa in some detail. Currently, we are focused on the Bahuvrihi Samasa, which is a unique kind of Samasa of Sanskrit, which is a different feature of Sanskrit. The Bahuvrihi Samasa assumes that the speakers of Sanskrit have reached a particular linguistic plane from which such a Samasa is stated and such a samasa is prescribed and also used by the speakers of Sanskrit. The features of the Bahuvrihi samasa can be explained in the form of an equation, a brief and simple equation stated on this particular slide. It is very important to redo this as long as available, as long as possible, primarily to bring home the salient features of the Samasa and Bahuvrihi Samasa in particular. So here we have X and Y, two separate, two independent entities in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent. They are however semantically interrelated as is shown by the plus sign. Now the speaker of Sanskrit decides to merge them together and generate one output in the form of x, y, which is one unit. So the input is two elements and the output is one unit, one element. Now this output has got three important features, namely Aikarthya or Ekarthata, Aikapadya or Ekapadata and Aikaswarya or Ekaswarata. Now, we have adopted a particular scheme while explaining this particular equation by which we highlight and put that letter in bold characters which acts as the head of the output samasa. So in the Tatpurusha samasa, we used to put Y in the bold characters thereby indicating that in the Tatpurusha samasa, Y acts as the head. In the Avyayi Bhava Samasa, we were marking X with the bold characters, indicating thereby that X as, acts as the head of XY in the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. Now, in the Bahuvrihi Samasa, we neither mark X nor mark Y with the bold characters, thereby indicating that none of the two, neither X nor Y, acts as the head of the Samasa, rather the head of the Samasa lies outside of the Samasa. It is the outer word which assumes the headship of this particular Samasa. So this is called Anya Padartha Pradhana. The Samasa is Anya Padartha Pradhana. These are the features of the Bahuvrihi Samasa. In the Ashtadhyayi, the Bahuvrihi Samasa is stated at various places. The Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras 
namely the compound prescribing rules or sutras, namely the sutras which lay down conditions fulfilling which the samasa process begins and these sutras are stated from 2.2.23 onwards up to 2.2.28 which is a very small section. 2.2.23 is Shesho Bahuvrihi and 2.2.28 is Tena Saheti Tulya Yogi. By the way, 2.2.29 is Charthe Dvandvaha. So this is a small section prescribing the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras. Then there, there are Samasanta Pratyaja Vidhayaka Sutras from 5.4.113 onwards up to 5.4.160. This is a big section and some part of this particular big section is also devoted to the Samasanta Adesha and not the Samasanta Pratyaya with respect to the Bahuvrihi Samasa. And then we have the Swaravidhayaka Sutras stated in 6.2. Thus we have Bahuvriho Prakritya Purva Padam 6.2.1 a very general sutra and then again 6.2.106 onwards up to 6.2.120 and also 6.2.162 onwards up to 6.2.177. These are the sutras which prescribe the accent as far as the Bahuvrihi Samasa is concerned. Swara Vidhayaka Sutras. This is how in the Ashtadhyayi, which is the core of Paninian grammar as well as the Paninian grammatical tradition, the Samasa, namely Bahubri, is treated. Currently, we are studying the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras and we have already studied 2.2.23 Shesho Bahubrihi and then we also studied Anekam Anyapadarthe 2.2.24 and in the previous lecture we studied the Sutra Sankhya Vyaya Sanna Duradhika Sankhya Sankhya 2.2.25. Now, in this lecture, we shall devote our attention to studying the remaining sutras 2.2.26, 27, and 28, which prescribe the Bahubrihi Samasa. First, let us take up 2.2.26, which is Ding Namani Antarale. Ding Namani Antarale. There are two padas in the sutra, Ding Namani and Antarale. Ding Namani is Prathama Bhuvachana or 1 slash 3, which means the names of the directions. Since this word appears in the Prathama Vibhakti, we say that because of the sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam, this term gets the Upasarjana Saudhnya. And then by the sutra Upasarjanam Purvam, it occupies the initial position of the Samasa. And then we have Antarale, which is 7 slash 1 of Antarale. And Antarale means in the sense of space in between. <coughs> the words continued are Sup from 212, Sahasupa from 214, Samasaha from 213, Samartha Padavithihi from 211. All this put together, the meaning of the sutra 2.2.26 can be stated below. Two interrelated subantas whose pratipadikas are words denoting the name of the directions get compounded with each other when the meaning of the compound is intended to be the space in between the directions and the resultant compound is called Bahuvrihi. I repeat, two interrelated subantas whose pratipadikas are words denoting the name of the directions get compounded with each other when the meaning of the compound is intended to be the space in between the directions and the resultant compound is called Bahuvrihi. <coughs> 
I repeat, two interrelated Subantas, Samartha Subanta, whose Pratipatikas are words denoting the name of the directions, Ning Namani Subantani Samarthani, get compounded Samasyante with each other when the meaning of the compound is intended to be the space in between the directions antarale and the resultant sam- compound samasaha is called bahuvrihi bahuvrihi let us take the example when the meaning to be denoted is the space in between south and east south is the direction east is also the direction so we have dakshanasyascha purvasyascha dishor yad antaralam that is the laukika vigraha where we are using two words indicating the direction however the meaning intended over here is the space in between these two directions so the alaukika vigraha over here is dakshana plus nas plus purva plus nas and so samasa saudhnya takes place by the sutra that we are studying 2 to 26 then the pratibhadika saudhnya takes place and then supodhatu pratibhadika yoga applies which deletes all the sups so we have dakshana plus zero plus purva plus zero and then dakshana which is the uttarapada undergoes the process of pumad bhava and dakshana becomes dakshana plus zero plus purva plus zero that is the next stage and when we join them together we get we get dakshina purva as the finally derived compound output when we use it in the sentence we add the pratyaya su after it and then we delete it because of the sutra halgya bhyodirghat etc and we get the form Dakshina Purva. So Dakshina becomes Dakshina because of one particular statement in the Paniyan grammatical tradition, namely Sarvanamno Vritti Matre Umvad Bhavaha. Vritti stands for a technical sense, namely the compound, the word which explains some other meaning. So Sarvanamnaha vritti matre pumbad bhavaha means when vritti is to be denoted and samasa is a vritti, sarvanama, namely the pronouns, they get pumbad bhava in the purva pada. So the meaning is, in a nutshell, in all the complex formations, the pronouns in the position of the purva pada goes, go back to their root form. Sarvanamnaha vritti matre pumvad bhavaha. So Dakshana is the Sarvanama and it goes back to its root form that is Dakshana. Similarly, we have the meaning to be conveyed is the space between north and east uttarasyascha purvasyascha dishor yadantaradam and we do the same processing and we get the finally derived compound output namely uttara purva the northeast similarly when the meaning is the space between south and west dakshinasyascha paschimasyascha dishor yadantaradam and we do the same processing and we arrive at the finally derived compound output namely Dakshina Paschima. Now Dakshina and Uttara they both are mentioned in the Sarvadigana and therefore they are also mentioned as or understood as the Sarvanama and therefore Sarvanamna Vritti Matre Pumbad Bhavaha applies to them and Purva Pumbad Bhava is done to them and therefore we get these forms Uttara Purva and Dakshina Paschima. This is Southwest. What is most important in this case is that the compound takes place 
of the popular name of the directions and not those names which are derived by grammar so paschima dakshina etc these are the popular names given to the directions whereas in the mythology the directions are given different names on account of the deity which protects that particular direction so east is called aindri because the lord of east is indra and kubera is the lord of north direction so north is called kauberi so now when you have somebody who is described as like aindri and kauberi so indra plus an plus neep plus kubera plus an plus neep this is the segmentation available to us now here we have an important statement which means namagrahanam rudhyartham tasmad yogikanam na so here by adding the suffix an we are getting aindra as a formation by adding the suffix an we are also getting kaubera instead of kubera and so here we are doing some kind of grammatical processing and the statement says namagrahanam rudhyartham the sutra has ding namani as a word and the traditional commentators have said that the word namani is uttered in the sutra to indicate that these ding namas they are primarily to be taken as the conventional words and never the grammatically derived words so aindra and kaubera will not come under the purview of this present sutra 2.2.26 let's now proceed to the next sutra tatra tena idam iti sarupe there are in fact five others in this particular sutra tatra tena idam iti and swarupe tatra means a word ending in the seventh case or saptami vibhakti tena indicates to a word which ends in the tritiya vibhakti or the third case idam means this and this is that anya padarth in this case iti is thus a quotative marker which means meaning of the compound so all this put together so it is stands for the meaning of the compound in the form of the means to capture grahana or means to strike praharana or mutuality namely karma vyatihara or fight that is yuddha these are generally the senses that are understood from this particular samasa the other word is sarupe meaning having the same form having put all these together the meaning of the sutra is as follows the two interrelated subantas which are of the same form and which denote one the means to capture and two the means to fight when mutual capture and mutual fight is the meaning denoted get compounded and the finally derived compound is called bahuvrihi that is the meaning of this particular sutra i repeat two interrelated subantas which are of the same form and which denote one the means to capture and two the means of fight when mutual capture and mutual fight is the meaning denoted by the compound they get compounded and the resultant compound is called bahuvrihi i repeat two interrelated subantas samartham anekam subantam which are of the same form sarupe and which denote the means to capture tatra and the means to fight tena when mutual capture and mutual fight is the meaning denoted by the samasa let us look at the example the example 
the meaning to be conveyed over here is the fight proceeded by capturing each other's hair. There are two persons who are fighting and in the fight they catch or capture each other's hair and try to pull the other person by hair. So we have Kesheshucha Kesheshucha Grihitva Idam Yuddham Pravruttam Kesheshu Kesheshucha Grihitva Idam Yuddham Pravruttam Now in this case Kesheshu Kesheshu they are of the same form and therefore they can get compounded by the present sutra which then has the Alaukika Vigraha namely as Kesha plus Sup plus Kesha plus Sup and then now Samasa Saudhnya takes place then we add the Samasanta Pratyaya Ich Ich Karma Vyati Hare so we have Kesha plus Sup plus Kesha plus Sup plus Ich after that the Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place and then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies so we have Klesha plus 0 plus Kesha plus 0 plus E and then the Purvapada Kesha has got a short A which is now lengthened. So we have Kesha plus 0 plus Kesha plus 0 plus E. Finally, the A in Uttarapada Kesha is deleted. So we have Kesha plus 0 plus Kesha plus 0 plus E and when we join them together, we get the form Kesha plus Kesh plus E that is Kesha Keshi. Kesha Keshi. This is the finally derived Bahuvrihi Samasa output of this particular sutra, Kesha Keshi. When we are to use it in the sentence, we add the sup suffix after it. So Kesha Keshi plus sup and then the sup gets deleted because Kesha Keshi becomes an avyaya. So avyayada supaha applies and when we delete sup, we get the form Kesha Keshi to be used in the sentence. Kesha Keshi. The other example is when the meaning to be denoted is the fight proceeded by capturing each other's sticks. Dandaischa dandaischa prarutya idam yuddham pravruttam. The fight proceeded by striking each other's sticks. Dandaischa dandaischa prarutya idam yuddham pravruttam. So the Laukika Vigraha is Dandaishcha, Dandaishcha, etc. Alaukika Vigraha is Danda plus Bhis plus Danda plus Bhis. And then again we add the Samasanta Pratyaya Ich. So we have Danda plus Bhis plus Danda plus Bhis plus Ich. Now Samasa Saudhnya takes place. Therefore Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. And so Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and deletes both the Sups. So we have Danda plus 0 plus Danda plus 0 plus E. And then we have the shorter vowel at the end of the Purvapada lengthened and we have Danda plus 0 plus Danda plus 0 plus E. And then the final A in Danda gets deleted. And so we have Danda plus Danda plus E and Danda Dandi is the finally derived compound output danda dandi when we use it in the sentence we add the suffix su after it so we have danda dandi plus su and then this su gets deleted because of the sutra avyayada supaha and so we have danda dandi plus zero and finally we get the form danda dandi one note on the samasa and the samasanta pratyaya added over here. The samasanta suffix ich is added by the sutra ich karma vyati hare 5.4.127. The lengthening or dirga of the end of the purvapada is affected by anyesha api drishyate 6.3.139. An important feature is the following. The output samasa is avyayi bhava as these output compounds are mentioned as part of the open-ended bag 
mentioned in the sutra Tishthat Gup Prabhruti Nicha, that is 2.1.17. This is a unique feature of this particular sutra. So, it is mentioned as a Bahuvrihi, but formally it behaves like uh, an Avyayi Bhava Samasa. Let us now study the final sutra in the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras related to Pahuvrihi and we have Tena Saheti Tulya Yogi 2.2.28 and there are four padas in the sutra Tena, Saha, Iti and Tulya Yogi. Tena means a word in the third case, Saha is with, Iti is thus and Tulya Yogi means in the sense of same relation. So the meaning of the sutra is as follows, an interrelated subanta saha which denotes the same relation is compounded with another interrelated subanta ending in the third case and the resultant compound is called bahuvrihi. I repeat, an interrelated subanta saha which denotes the same relation is compounded with another interrelated subanta ending in the third case and the resultant compound is called bahuvrihi. I repeat, an interrelated subanta saha, saha subantam, which denotes the same relation, tulya yoga, is compounded samasyate with another interrelated subanta, samarthena subantena saha, ending in the third case, tena, and the resultant compound, samasaha, is called bahuvrihi. Bahuvrihi. Let us look at the example. The meaning to be denoted over here is one who has come with son, saha putrena agataha. That is the laukika vigraha which denotes this particular meaning. So now we have the alaukika vigraha, namely saha plus su plus putra plus ta. So now the Samasa Saudhnya takes place and so the Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place and so Sopadhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and we get the form Saha plus zero plus Putra plus zero as the next step of derivation. And then this Saha gets optionally deleted and we get the form Saha Putra as well as Saputra as the finally derived compound output. Then we add the suffix su to both sahaputra plus su plus saputra plus su and we get the finally derived form namely sahaputraha as well as saputraha. Sahaputraha, saputraha pita. The father has come together with his son. Saha is optionally substituted by sa by the sutra vopasarjanasya namely 6.3.82. It is observed that sometimes saha gets compounded with other interrelated subantas in the sense of existence as well and not just tulya yoga. For example, sakarmaka, one which has an object. Salomaka, one who has hair. Sapakshaka, one who has wings. So, these are some very important samasas noted to be the examples of 2.2.28 with an additional semantic input. To summarize, peculiar Bahuvrihi samasa and its peculiar features are stated by 2.2.26 up to 2.2.28. In case of 2.2.27, the output samasa is in fact an avyaya. It is stated in the open-ended bag, akriti gana, stated in the avyayi bhava section, namely in 2.1.17, tishtagup prabhruti nicha. This samasa is generated in a very, very specific semantic domain of mutual fight.
a very specific case. 2.2.26 states the Bahubrihi Samasa of the names of the directions when the meaning of the compound is the space in between those two directions. Similarly, A 2.2.28 deals with what is known as Saha Bahubrihi. The tradition observes that the compound is taking place with more semantic conditions than the ones stated in 2.2.28. The tradition admits that this fact happens and accommodates such forms by adding some more explanations and statements in the traditional commentaries. With this we come to the close of the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras. From here onwards we will start studying the Samasanta Pratyayas related to the Bahubrihi Samasa. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.